Places can go from being great to horrible overnight. That's how Doug Casey describes Latin America, a part of the world that he's lived in for many years. Today, I'm going to give you some of his favorite places in Latin America to avoid the stereotypical chaos there. <laughs> So Doug Casey is the original nomad capitalist. He's been living overseas and investing overseas in crazy places for decades. Read the book, The International Man, Hero of Mine, speaker again this year at Nomad Capitalist Live. And so if it's your first time here, I'm Andrew Henderson, founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. You can get all the details at nomadcapitalist.com. You can also learn about Nomad Capitalist Live, the biggest and best offshore event. And so I'm gonna tell you what Doug Casey thinks are some of the best places in Latin America and how you can play this because I think Latin America offers a lot of benefits. Number one, if you are from North America, you're going to be generally speaking in the same time zone. I'm seeing more entrepreneurs who want to be in the same time zone, including also some investors, some active traders who they want to trade the markets on normal times, right? Even if you move to Ireland or Portugal, I think those are good places to consider. You're still five, six, eight hours, depending on where you are coming from in North America, ahead of the rest of your team, ahead of your customers. And so for a lot of folks, that's just not interesting. I've lived in Asia for a long time, a lot of you know midnight and 1 a.m. phone calls. And so if you don't want that, Latin America works well. It's got a vibrant lifestyle. It's generally speaking, for, for much of the region, has one language this, that isn't that difficult to learn. It's got relatively friendly people. It's got a certain vibrance to it. And again, it has that proximity back to where you're from. The challenge that Doug Casey alludes to is that places can go from being great to being horrible overnight. Now, I have a home in Bogota. I've spent a lot of time in Mexico. I've traveled throughout most of the region. And so quite frankly, I think that the, the issue of if you keep your nose out of trouble, trouble probably won't find you. I live in a great neighborhood in Bogota have great building, a little bit older building, great security guys, been there for 25 years, some of them, um, you know, take basic precautions. Yeah, I'm taking more precautions than I would in Georgia or Dubai or even Malaysia. Um, I'm not taking that many more precautions, honestly, than I would in, let's say, Barcelona, where people steal, you know, watches right off your wrist. Uh, so I think that, you know, if you're moving from, as I always give the example, Naperville, Illinois, yeah, if you move to another place in the U.S., you're not moving to like some, some high crime hellhole and you wouldn't do the same thing moving to Latin America. But what Doug Casey's talking about is kind of the, the overall culture. No doubt, there's kind of a hot and cold culture there. And so the places that he talks about that he likes, number one, Uruguay, being a pretty small country that benefits from being next to two countries that have had some problems, uh, Argentina and Brazil. And so Uruguay has a multi-year tax exemption. You can basically go uh, and pay nothing for multiple years living in Uruguay, you can work towards citizenship, it's a little more difficult than some people make it out to be, but you can work towards citizenship in a relatively peaceful country that, that is supported almost by people from these other two countries moving in and bringing their wealth with them and just, they're going where they're treated best, right? You may, you may not have heard about Uruguay, certainly in some of the retirement and the living overseas circles, they talk about it. But for most people, you know, Argentines and Brazilians are the ones moving there, right? Not a ton of Americans, not a ton of Germans, you know, they're actually uh, historically were Germans. But anyway, Uruguay is a place where they know where their bread is buttered. They were one of the countries that came out during the pandemic and said, why would we raise taxes? Why? Because they are a recipient country. Pe they are receiving people coming in. They need people coming in to support their economy rather than being like the United States. Where else are you going to go? Right? Where are you there? Where are you? There's nowhere to go. And so they realize where their bread is buttered. That's why I like small countries. And yeah, I've been there. A incredibly boring country, quite frankly. So if you want just to be left alone, you want a peaceful life, um, you can live in Montevideo, you can live in Punta del Este, you can live in one of those uh, beach communities. So Uruguay is uh, one of the ones that stood out for Doug Casey. Uh, he also mentioned Southern Brazil, so right next door to Uruguay, but said, hey, he's like, I love Brazil, much different from Northern Brazil. Brazil is a place where you can get a residence permit, um, you can give birth to a child, you can get citizenship for the child, get citizenship for yourself after a year or two. Um, you can get residence permit through investment. There's a lot of different, op different opportunities to move to Brazil. Great passport, by the way. But he says, even more taxed, even more regulated, in his opinion, than Argentina. And so, yeah, one of the downsides if, is we recently talked to someone who gave birth in Brazil specifically so that their child would become Brazilian upon birth, same way you'd have in the U.S. or Canada. Right? And, they, and I said, are you going to get the citizenship? And they were kind of interested until they realized they have to live there for one year plus some processing time. And chances are they would need to live there long enough to pay taxes. And just besides the paying, it's just the convoluted system that turned them off. And they said, hey, at least my kid has a second passport. So uh, Southern Brazil, very interesting place. Could be part of a trifecta. Maybe you spend three or four months a year there. But if you want more stability, long-term Uruguay, probably better. 
Costa Rica, Doug says, very stable, the most European place in Central America, better demographics. That's expensive. Listen, if you're a seven or eight figure entrepreneur, so be it. Also says it's overrun. That's up to you. I, I see uh, definitely I don't want to go where, you know, just live in a bunch of, uh, you know, community full of Americans. Uh, but hey, some people like that. Maybe you want to live in a place where you've got a strong community. So Costa Rica is mentioned. Costa Rica flirted with uh, abandoning its territorial tax system recently, and they may still do it now in the OECD. Uh, but Costa Rica has been a very tax friendly place. Obviously, again, good proximity. If you're from the U.S. and Canada, that's probably where you're flying through to get there. Uh, and so you have, yeah, probably one of the best countries in Central America to go to. Again, it's small. You can work towards citizenship. Um, just kind of a different vibe there, quite frankly, than a place like a Mexico or a Colombia or even some of its neighbors. And so Costa Rica is possible. Now, both of these countries you can move to by just showing you have some money. You have you know, a couple thousand dollars a month in each of the cases. Or you put some money in the bank. Or if you want to get tax residence, you buy a property. So lots of opportunities to move here. Lots of opportunities to reduce your taxes as low as zero in both countries on a relatively long-term basis. He also says Panama will probably stay okay again. What does Panama benefit from? Banks aren't quite what they were, you know, once were. Panama Papers, does that really affect things? Yeah, I mean, the banks are, are certainly very bureaucratic. Uh, he thinks it'll stay okay. So, you know, there are still friendly nations visa options for entrepreneurs that are relatively inexpensive. There are real estate options for friendly nations countries. There's about 50 countries where you've got special immigration status. And if you don't, if you're not a citizen of one of those countries, let's say you're a Caribbean citizen by investment uh, and you gave up your U.S. passport, um, there's still like a red carpet uh, program where you can go. So if you buy expensive property in uh, Panama, you can get in there. He says that one will stay okay. And again, they're used to people's money coming in. They're used to people coming in. It's the kind of country where they don't necessarily want to chase people out. They want people to come in. So those are three that he mentions. Bottom line, he says the region overall is unstable. I do think those are three good choices of places that will be relatively stable, that are well connected, uh, that are decent places to live. And again, all three have pretty good tax benefits. You could pay as little as zero. And the first two in particular are really affordable to get into. Uh, also the first two in particular, Costa Rica and Uruguay. Probably easier to get citizenship. Panama, I've long said, I think it's very difficult. So here's how you might want to play this, right? If you want to be in Latin America, I've long talked about my trifecta approach where you spend four months in three different places. You don't have to do that. But what I might do is if I'm going to spend time in one place, Uruguay, for example, that's quite a ways down there, which certainly appeals to some people. But if you devote maybe a couple of trips a year, get your Uruguay residence, move to Uruguay, okay? Maybe you take a trip to other parts of uh, Latin America. And what you could do is you could set up multiple residences around the region because they're generally very affordable. So you could get residence in Argentina. You could get residence in Paraguay, right? If you have a good passport, um, less than $5,000 in the bank, you can get permanent residence. You may not get citizenship in these countries if you're not living there. Argentina perhaps is more flexible. Um, Paraguay is not so flexible anymore, but hey, you have the residence permit. And if it's permanent especially, or if it can just be renewed without physical presence while not qualifying for citizenship, then you have that residence permit. Argentina may not be the place you're going to want to escape to from Uruguay, but hey, it's not a bad residence permit to have. It's not going to cost you very much. Paraguay, same thing. So those are like right next door, right? You could get a residence permit somewhere else in the region. You could get one in Ecuador, for example. He said that's not his favorite anymore. I happen to think there's still some good um, land opportunities there. You could get a, a residence permit in Colombia. It's going to be a little bit harder now with, with the real estate program being changed. Um, you can get a residence permit in Mexico, right? You can show you have income. You can get residence in Mexico. It's, it's a little bit bureaucratic, but you can do it, right? Most of those Central American countries put some money in the bank, show income, do something, right? You could, probably, you could easily collect half a dozen residence permits in Latin America. Some of those would even start the clock taking towards citizenship, and you may be able just to swing through in three, four, five years and collect your citizenship in some conditions. But the idea is, if you're going to live in Costa Rica, have a residence permit next door in Nicaragua. Or we've had folks who wanted to move to Nicaragua, they felt it was incredibly free, right? And I think, you know, it is. Uh, I think there's a, there's a certain amount of just on the ground freedom. Okay, you're concerned about what can happen in the government, get the Costa Rican residence permit next door. You can always just go next door. Same way I've told people who live in the United States, yeah, get Mexican residence. You can literally drive or walk there. And so for me, uh, number one, I'm going to have multiple residence permits in Latin America just because it's so affordable, right? And potentially there could be some citizenship benefits depending on how I allocate my time. The other thing I'm going to do is a common point of confusion for folks is I'm going to bank somewhere else. Okay, I'm not banking in Paraguay other than I need to keep some money in the bank in Paraguay to keep my permanent residence. 
and potentially to you know pay some local bills. In many cases, by the way, you don't even have to pay local bills. You know, locally, uh, I often use foreign cards in different places. But okay, if you're paying something through the bank, fair enough. Some of these places you're paying in cash, by the way. But bank only to pay local bills. Bank if you need to keep some money in the bank to maintain your residence permit. But if you've got a million dollars sitting in banks, don't put that in Paraguay or Costa Rica. Probably not even Panama, according to a lot of folks that I talk to. I mean, Panama has so many banks, you could spread it around, and I think some of them are, are, are certainly not bad. But you're not banking in Latin America. When I look at diversifying in having you know, an account in Asia, okay, you probably go to Singapore. You go to Europe, UK, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, they're all kind of overpriced and overrated, but all right, fine, you get the service. I guess in, in the Caribbean and Latin America, the Bahamas and the Caymans have some services, Caymans being stronger, but harder to get. Generally speaking, where's, where's the banking hub in Latin America? It's in Miami. That's where people go. They go to Miami, they take their money there. And so if you're trying to get out of a country like the United States, yeah, bank in somewhere else. Bank in a country like a Georgia. I suppose Ecuador maybe could be interesting if you want higher interest rates. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, that's for small amounts of money. If you have larger amounts of money, go to a Singapore, go to something like that, and then live in these places. And so your bank doesn't have to be in the same time zone. But if you want to be in your same time, same time zone, you want to be in Latin America, then I think multiple residence permits could be an option if you share Doug Casey's idea of instability. Again, they're cheap. I think those are three countries to consider. And I would like to hear your comments. Which of those three, Uruguay, Costa Rica, and Panama, would you choose?